This is Business Analytics Using Forecasting, and I'm Galich Mueli. In this third and last part on neural nets, we're going to look at how a neural net is estimating its parameters. This estimation method is not specific to time series forecasting, it's general to neural net estimation. This video is a little more technical than the others, but the two main points to remember are that the estimation is more complex than in regression models, and therefore it's much easier to overfit. In the earlier videos, we introduced the terminology used to describe a neural network. Specifically, we have an input, an output, and hidden layers. Each one of these layers include neurons, which connect all the neurons in the previous layer. The connections between the neurons in different layers are through weights, WIJ. Then the software uses our training data to estimate these weights. Once we have these estimates, we can use the network to generate predictions. Let's now see how the software estimates the weights. In regression models, the least squares methods treat all the errors equally by taking an average of all the squared errors. In contrast, in neural nets, the algorithm minimizes each error separately by iteratively adjusting the weights. The first principle is therefore iterative error minimization. Here's the general formula showing how weight WIJ leading to neuron J is updated by adding a component that is a function of the error of neuron J called error J. The error formula is slightly different for neurons in the output and hidden layers, but these are small details. The second estimation principle is called back propagation. The idea here is that we update the weights starting from the output layer and moving back to the hidden layers. This schematic shows the idea of back propagation. In this diagram, we flip the network image so that the inputs are at the bottom and the output is at the top. Data enters from the bottom to produce predicted values, and then the prediction errors at the top are used to update the weights moving down to the hidden layers. The advantage of this approach is that it can capture very complex nonlinear relationships. The price is that this type of optimization can get stuck in a local minimum. It's also computationally intensive, so it can be very slow. To try and address these two weaknesses, there are several additional parameters that the software uses. Two common ones are learning rate and momentum. The learning rate is similar to a smoothing constant, where higher values lead to faster learning. The momentum parameter can be set higher to have the magnitude or direction of the weights similar to previous iterations. These details are not critical on their own, but they explain why neural network software has so many parameters that the user can tweak. It also shows why you can get very different results using different software or different parameter choices. One last detail to know is that the training data can be fed into the algorithm in two different ways. In case updating, we feed the records one by one and the weights are updated after every new record. This is more accurate, but also more computationally costly. Completing feeding all the records through the network one by one is called one epoch or one sweep. Then the algorithm returns to the first record and starts another epoch. The alternative is called batch updating. And here all the training records are fed before the weights are updated. This is computationally cheaper and faster, but it is less accurate. Different software offer one or the other updating method. The current Excel Miner version uses case updating. You might wonder when the software decides to stop updating the weights. There can be different criteria that the user or the software sets. One option is when the weights stop changing a lot. Another option is maybe you're optimizing the performance on the validation so that when your RMSE is below a certain number, you actually stop. And finally, you can just say, I don't want more than 20 epochs or 20 sweeps. Some software allow you to tweak this and some software do not. Lastly, the most important point to remember about neural nets and estimation is that this complex estimation method means that it's easy to overfit the training data. With sufficient iterations, overfitting is really likely to happen. Therefore, there are few things we can do to try and avoid overfitting. 
We can examine the validation performance and compare it to the training performance. Some software even allow you to look at the performance after each epoch. We can limit the number of iterations or epochs. We can keep our network as simple as needed. And finally, we can combine the results from multiple networks using averaging. The R function AVNNet and ExcelMiter's boosted neural networks perform exactly such averaging. With this, we conclude our discussion of neural networks for forecasting. Let us again summarize what we've seen in the three videos. Neural nets are data-driven prediction algorithms that can be used for forecasting. They can be automated so that the software searches over a range of networks and chooses the best one or averages across several. Neural nets can be used to forecast numerical series as well as binary series. This is one advantage they have over all the methods we discussed thus far. In terms of pre-processing, there are different ways to set up a neural network and there's disagreement on what's the best pre-processing approach. So you have to try a few different setups. In any case, it's useful to detect and address outliers in unusual periods before running the neural net. Because of its data-driven nature, and because it fits very complex relationships, the neural net requires a sufficiently large number of observations in the training period. That's why it's typically used in high-frequency applications such as financial trading and energy use. Finally, neural nets are considered a black box because unlike regression, we can't get coefficients that are easily interpretable. However, in forecasting, interpretability is not always our top priority. What we care about is evaluating performance on the validation period. Performance evaluation is extremely important with neural nets. Because they fit a complex relationship, they are easy to overfit. Make sure to compare the training and validation performance. And very last, neural nets are heavier to run. In some applications, this is acceptable, but in others, it is not. With this, we conclude our discussion of neural nets.